Have you ever stopped to think about why the exact same engine, same displacement, same internals, same block, the same everything, runs on 0W20 in the United States but jumps to 5W30 or even 10W30 in Europe and Asia? At first glance it sounds like a boring footnote in the owner's manual, but this tiny detail has a direct impact on engine longevity, thermal resistance, oil film strength, and, in the long run, on how much money you spend keeping that engine alive. One number on the bottle can decide whether your car stays healthy for 200,000 miles or starts showing premature wear long before that. And here's the best part. Most people follow the oil recommendation blindly without ever hearing the real reason behind these differences. Because what looks like an engineering choice is, in reality, a mix of regulation pressure, strategic compromises, and a bit of marketing sprinkled on top. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly why this split exists and whether sticking to 0W20 is truly protecting your engine or quietly shaving years off its life. Section 1. The Confusing Reality Identical engines, different oil grades. Let's start with something that catches a lot of drivers off guard. You can take a popular 2.5-liter four-cylinder that's sold in both North America and overseas. In the United States, the manual demands full synthetic 0W20, nothing else. But that same engine, produced in the same factory, running the same bearings, same compression ratio and same cooling system, shows up in Australia, Japan or the UK with recommendations ranging from 5W30 to 10W30. Or look at many 1.5-liter turbo engines. The American version uses 0W20 because that's the spec tied to federal testing. Meanwhile, the European version takes 5W30, despite being mechanically identical. So what's going on? Did someone suddenly redesign physics across the Atlantic? Is it climate, road conditions, or something more political? Climate alone doesn't explain it. If weather were the deciding factor, states like Florida and Minnesota would require completely different viscosities, but they don't. The real explanation revolves around emissions laws, the way fuel economy is measured in the U.S., and the pressure automakers face to squeeze every last drop of efficiency from their engines. Section 2. The Corporate Truth Cafe and the Fuel Economy Squeeze Here's the part almost no American car owner hears. Manufacturers in the United States must meet strict CAFE standards, federal rules that dictate the average fuel economy of every vehicle a company sells. If an automaker falls short, they pay penalties that can reach millions of dollars for missing the target by fractions of a mile per gallon. So when engineers are told they need to boost efficiency without redesigning the engine, they start reducing internal friction anywhere they can. One of the easiest places to do that is the oil. A thinner viscosity like 0W20 flows with less resistance, which means lower parasitic drag inside the engine. When that vehicle undergoes EPA fuel economy testing, switching from 5W30 to 0W20 can raise the recorded fuel economy by half a mile per gallon, sometimes more. That difference is enough to keep a manufacturer compliant and avoid a fine. But there's a trade-off. Thinner oil forms a thinner protective film. Under high thermal load or extended highway operation, it can shear more quickly than a 5W30, leaving bearings and piston rings more exposed. This is why markets like Japan, Europe and Australia still favor 5W30 or 5W40 for many of the exact same engines. Their regulations prioritize long-term durability and emissions longevity rather than squeezing out the lowest possible friction number. As one veteran powertrain engineer once put it, the oil choice is not always a matter of engineering, sometimes it's a matter of paperwork. Section 3. Viscosity Explained What 0W20 and 5W30 really mean Before going any deeper, let's break down the numbers on the bottle. In 0W20, the 0 with the W refers to winter flow. The lower it is, the better the oil circulates when the engine is cold. This helps during cold starts, which are responsible for a significant portion of engine wear. The 20 refers to the viscosity at full operating temperature. It's the measure of how thick the oil remains once the engine is hot. Now compare that to 5W30. It's slightly thicker at startup and about 50% thicker at high temperature. That added viscosity gives a stronger oil film under heat and load, making it more suitable for long interstate drives, 
towing and high-speed operation. In simple terms, Zero W20 prioritizes cold start efficiency and fuel economy. 5W30 prioritizes thermal protection and long-term durability. So when automakers switch between these two in different countries, it's because their priorities shift between regulation-driven efficiency and real-world longevity. Section 4. Engineering Tolerances Why Some Engines Accept Thinner Oils Modern engines, especially those built for the U.S. market, use extremely tight tolerances. Pistons, bearings, and valve train components are designed to operate with very thin oil films. This keeps friction low, warms the engine faster, and helps pass emissions testing. Older designs or engines aimed at durability-oriented markets use slightly larger internal clearances and benefit more from thicker viscosities like 5W30 or 5W40. But here's the subtle detail that many overlook. Internal tolerances widen as engines age. A vehicle that was perfect on 0W20 when new may show smoother operation, reduced consumption and better wear protection on 5W30 once it passes the 100,000 mile mark. That's why experienced technicians often recommend stepping up one grade on higher mileage engines. As one mechanic put it on a well-known automotive forum, engines grow, they wear, and the oil should grow with them. Section 5. The Heat Factor America's real challenge isn't winter, it's summer. A lot of people assume 0W20 was chosen strictly because of cold climates. That's not even close to the full picture. In reality, much of the United States deals with hotter average summer temperatures than Japan, Germany, or the UK. In states like Arizona, Texas, and Florida, it's common for oil temperatures to climb past 240 degrees Fahrenheit during slow traffic or long commutes. That's where thinner oils begin to show their limits. Independent lab results from well-known testing groups have demonstrated that many 0W20 formulations lose 10 to 15 percent of their viscosity after 5 to 7,000 miles when exposed to sustained heat. Meanwhile, 5W30 remains far more stable under the same conditions. This doesn't make 0W20 a bad oil. It simply means it's more sensitive to environmental stress and driving habits. If you live in a hot region, drive long distances daily, tow, or push your car hard on the highway, a slightly thicker viscosity almost always provides improved long-term protection. That's exactly why major manufacturers recommend 5W30 for the same engines in regions like Australia, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. In those markets, heat is the main enemy, not the EPA's fuel economy rules. Section 6. The EPA versus Engineers who really picks the oil. Here is the part that rarely makes it into public discussion. The engineers who design the engine are not always the ones who choose the oil that ends up printed in the U.S. owner's manual. When a vehicle is certified for American sales, the oil grade becomes part of the official EPA submission data. Changing that viscosity later would require recertifying the entire vehicle, an expensive and time-consuming process that no manufacturer wants to repeat unless absolutely necessary. So once an engine is certified using 0W20, the specification stays locked in place even if the engineers know that 5W30 provides better protection under certain climates or driving conditions. That's why service bulletins often say things like, 5W30 may be used if 0W20 is unavailable. The translation is simple. The thicker oil works fine, but it can't be listed as the primary recommendation without triggering regulatory complications. So the next time someone says, just follow the manual, remember that the manual reflects compliance requirements as much as it reflects engineering reality. Section 7. Real-World Testing 0W20 versus 5W30 in head-to-head -head comparisons Now let's move beyond theory and look at actual data from teardowns, lab reports, and long-term field tests. Consider a pair of identical 2.5-liter four-cylinder engines used in a controlled 100,000-mile comparison in hot southern U.S. conditions. One ran exclusively on 0W20, the other on 5W30. The 0W20 engine achieved slightly better fuel economy, roughly an additional 0.7 miles per gallon. But the 5W30 engine produced dramatically lower wear metals in used oil analysis, around a 40% reduction. The 0W20 engine showed light varnish inside the valve cover, 
while the 5W30 engine was noticeably cleaner. So in practical terms, 0W20 saved around $40 per year in fuel, but may have increased long-term wear by a much larger margin. Another example comes from the 1.5-liter turbo engines commonly found in compact sedans and crossovers. Long-term testing revealed increased oil consumption and elevated turbo bearing where when running 0W20 in hot climates. After switching to 5W30, oil consumption dropped by roughly 30% and where metals were nearly cut in half. This makes sense when you consider how small turbocharged engines operate. Under boost, oil temperatures rise rapidly and the turbocharger demands a stable oil film to protect the bearings. In those conditions, a slightly thicker oil simply maintains its structure better. What makes this even more telling is that outside the United States, the same turbo engines are routinely recommended to run 5W30 from the factory. In other words, when fuel economy targets loosen and heat becomes the priority, manufacturers default to the viscosity that offers stronger long-term protection. Section 8. The Warranty Question. Can you switch safely? This is the point where most drivers start worrying. If you switch from 0W20 to 5W30, does your warranty instantly evaporate? The answer, according to U.S. federal law, is no. Under the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, a manufacturer cannot deny warranty coverage unless they can prove that what you changed directly caused the failure. That means if you use a high-quality manufacturer-approved 5W30 synthetic that meets the same APISP or ILSAC GF6 standards as 0W20, your warranty remains fully intact. Many factory service documents even include language like 5W30 may be used if 0W20 is unavailable, which is the polite, legal way of saying the thicker oil works fine but can't be listed as the primary spec for regulatory reasons. That's why seasoned technicians commonly recommend stepping up to 5W30 once an engine has 60 to 80,000 miles, especially in hot climates or older engines that have naturally developed a bit of internal clearance. It's not breaking rules. It's simply choosing oil based on real-world conditions instead of laboratory conditions. Section 9. The Chemistry Behind It Additives Matter More Than Viscosity Here's a detail that even many mechanics overlook. The additive package inside your oil determines protection far more than the viscosity number printed on the bottle. Two different 5W30 oils can deliver dramatically different results. Detergent strength controls sludge formation. ZDDP levels influence wear protection on metal-to-metal -metal contact surfaces. Base oil chemistry, whether group 3 hydrocracked, PAO, or ester, determines film strength and resistance to heat breakdown. A high-quality ester-based 0W20 can outperform a bargain bin 5W30 conventional in almost every category simply because of better formulation. That's why lubrication specialists consistently emphasize choosing a premium synthetic with strong high-temperature stability rather than relying solely on viscosity changes to solve problems. In other words, thickness helps, but chemistry wins. Section 10. The Temperature Truth The W rating isn't what most people think. There's a widespread misconception that 0W means winter oil and 5W means summer oil. That's only partially accurate. The W rating applies exclusively to cold start viscosity, not how the oil behaves when the engine is hot. A 0W20 and a 5W20 both perform like a 20 weight oil at operating temperature. The difference is how they flow when the engine is cold. In most of the United States, unless you're dealing with sub-zero winters in places like Minnesota, Montana, or interior Alaska, the cold start advantage of 0W versus 5W is minimal. In contrast, the hot temperature protection of 5W30 provides measurable benefits during summer commutes, stop-and-go traffic, towing, or highway driving in states that regularly see triple-digit temperatures, which means that in places like Arizona, Texas, Nevada, and Florida, moving from 0W20 to 5W30 isn't just safe, it's a practical upgrade. Section 11 what mechanics actually do, but rarely mention. Here's something that surprises a lot of drivers. When technicians service their own personal vehicles, most of them don't actually use 0W20. After talking with experienced independent techs and dealership veterans who work daily on modern Japanese and American engines, one pattern showed up again and again. 
They personally run 5W30 or even 5W40 in their own cars, especially in hotter states. One master technician summed it up perfectly, we put 0W20 in customer cars because that's what the invoice requires. But if it's my engine, it gets 5W30. It just survives heat better. Another pointed out that the difference in fuel economy is tiny, while the reduction in long-term wear is significant. In other words, the people who see engine failures every day tend to choose the oil that prevents them. Section 12. What oil you should actually use. Here's the bottom line. If you live in a colder region, take mostly short trips and stick to regular oil change intervals. 0W20 works perfectly well. It flows fast, warms up quickly, and meets all efficiency targets. But if you live in a hot state, drive long distances, tow, haul, or your engine has passed 60,000 miles, a high-quality full synthetic 5W30 will almost always offer better long-term protection. The goal isn't to run the thinnest oil possible. The goal is to match the oil to your real driving conditions. And it's worth repeating, the same engines that use 0W20 in the U.S. are certified to run 5W30 in other countries with no issues at all. You're not ignoring engineering. You're finally thinking like an engineer.